Christina Dennis, and it's Monday Matters time. And boy, has this been one of those Mondays and Mondays. Um, this morning I had to go and uh, participate in my individual education plan for my son. And uh, it's called an IEP. And if you are around special needs families uh, and you hear them talk about IEP, it's the time to stop and just let them know that you're with them because it's a difficult um it's a difficult scenario in the, under the best circumstances. And often the best circumstances are not necessarily what you have going on. And so you go into a room um, and you have every person there. If you're lucky, um, your occupational therapist, your speech therapist, the teacher, if you're in a traditional school setting, then you're going to have the uh, general education teacher there, uh, principals, um, in my case, we have a non-public school because the general school couldn't deal with Billy. Um, that was, it was a really unfortunate situation, but it was one of those unfortunate situations that led to a really beautiful situation because the teacher that he has um, loves him. And, uh, but when you're going in, I, well, let me put it this way. Um, lawyers come with parents to individualize education plans. And if you've never had to lawyer up uh, to talk about your child's education, consider yourself blessed. I have. Um, and because I did in the beginning, um, it, it has afforded me not only that and all the studies and all of the work that I've done in the field of special needs and education has afforded me a certain amount of uh, ability, a certain amount of fortitude when I'm dealing with uh, special needs or dealing with the school district. But it still sucks. And uh, what I want to talk about today is saying the hard stuff and being pushed, put in a situation where you have to fight um, and stand your ground um, with people that you never thought you would have to do that with. And growing up and figuring out that that's what my job is as Billy's mother. And uh, my job is to point out the facts and talk about them and uh, leave room for other opinions and to negotiate back and forth exactly uh, what my son needs. And that is not easy. And that is one of the gifts that autism has brought me is the ability to be confident in myself, knowing that if I don't feel like something's right intuitively, I don't sign. If I don't feel like something's right for Billy, I don't agree to it. I'm all right now with not having the most popular opinion. I'm all right with being perceived as difficult or uh, aggressive or assertive, however they want to paint it. And, um, even though I, there's always a moment where there are tears that come because listening to uh, what people have decided about your child or the, you know, we today because he's 15 and he's going to turn 16 before our next IEP, we had to do something called an individualized transition plan where they are asking this 15 year old what his interests are and everything that I've learned about uh about today and our children and our, our Generation Z, you know, they don't, we don't really know what we want to be when we're 15, but for some reason when it comes to special needs, we, high, we actually hold them to a higher standard. And I know that's put in place because of, um, I'm guessing people not paying attention and then the child being, uh, you know, graduated with no plan after school. But it's a hard pill to swallow when you're the parent sitting there and you're looking at things like line cook, dishwasher, um, just their, gosh, their expectations are, are low compared to what I believe um, is a possibility for my son. But I have to separate myself and it's such a good lesson to learn. One, if I stand up for things and I stand for myself and I'm strong within my opinion, I'm not going to make everybody happy. And what a good lesson to learn. I don't have to be rude. I don't have to be aggressive. I don't have to take it personally. Oh my gosh. And if I can do what I did today, sitting at a table, discussing things with people that have a lot of power over what is going to happen to my son on a daily basis and doing it in a respectful manner, but also continuing to hold my ground. I can do anything and I can hold um, myself accountable to a good standard of treating them with respect, but also holding on to the idea that I'm not going to give in. And, um, 
I came home, I took a rest because it's hard. It's hard. We had to talk about toileting. Um, we had to talk about, um, you know, uh, him writing his name. We had to talk about all kinds of things that I didn't think I would have to be doing. And I am all right with the fact that I do now. And so I want to encourage you that if you're in a situation where you have to say things that are not popular, you have to say things that are not going to give you, you know, that people don't want to deal with, that they're, they're not happy about, it's okay because ultimately I'm the adult now and I have to be in charge of what is going to happen to my son and what I am going to hold these people accountable to and um, being okay with not being liked. And at the end of the IEP, and then I know special needs mamas are going to understand, but the woman that represents the school district slid a paper across the table and asked me to sign that I was approving an IEP that wasn't complete, that hadn't been adjusted, had not been revised, that I didn't see. She asked me to sign that twice. And I said both times, oh, no, I haven't received the IEP, so I'm not going to sign that. Oh, oh no, no, I, 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 you know, I, I don't approve of it because I haven't seen it. And this is so um, unfortunate and shame on them for uh, imploring skills or imploring techniques where they ask you to sign a paper that's going to stay in place for a year um, before saying that you received it and you approved it when you haven't even seen it because it hasn't been revised. And so what I loved about it was that I didn't get offended. I just simply said, no, no, oh no, I haven't received it. So no, I'm not going to sign it and smiled and kept talking. And she was huffy and a little pissy and she had to live through it. And I got, I got an email this afternoon with the revised one and I'm going to take my time to read it before I sign it. And, um, I have to be grateful for the situation that I was placed in today, grateful for all the people who showed up and still recognize that there's a little bit of pain involved in it and that it, it does uh, leave me very tender hearted and that fear shows up. And that's just the way a full life is. Um, I am really grateful that I had that moment today and I'm grateful for the son that God gave me and for everything that I have in my life. I love my life. And I still have those sad moments. And so I just wanted to share that, um, that Monday, that on this Monday matters, that it's super important to be okay with the fact that not everybody's going to like me and not everybody's going to be pleased with me and that it's okay if I, it's okay if I cause friction because it's important that I stay true to myself. And so ladies that are watching, love you both. Happy birthday, Rebecca. And I will check in later. If you know a special needs mom or one that has to go through IEPs or any mom, I guess, but really those special needs moms that deal with this every year. Um, this isn't a parent teacher conference. I mean, if you have to bring a lawyer uh, to make sure that your child is going to get the best education or at least the fairest education. Yeah, it's already tough. So hug their necks, be kind to them, support them um, as you've supported me, ladies, and I will check in later. Bye.